holding memories of people who'd passed by. Muddy little lights up against an enormous golden sky. Painful clarity. Skyscrapers around the clouds collar. New MRTs like blood drips on concrete floor. This is just prefaces for marble shrines. Fine enough for the living to sculpt, but the noble deceased deserve more. And well, there I was in my greatest moment of loss, staring so wandering at rows and columns of streetlights. In my mind, they were pulled off the pavement and shattered, their moments of past scattered into a collective burst, this incandescent furor of big orange that liquefied the streets. So for one instant, there'll be no city, to come but not yet to be, none at all, and all your souls could find easy exit for some altar above. Just a, a sword that you had here, Rinchon. Um, you've got two drafts, haven't you, of, of okay. uh, one, one poem. I was just thinking, because we want to leave some time for questions, yep. would you be able to talk very briefly about how, yes, okay. the kind of transition from one draft to another? Okay. So, um, as I thought that this, you know, thinking that, that wanting to show, uh, like, the first draft of a poem and then the successive draft of one that I'm writing right now, that I hope that. So I, this poem is called Boundaries, and actually the one on the on the last page is the first draft, and the so one on the, the, the and the one prior is the yeah. second draft. Yeah. So um, I guess like you know, uh, uh, I mean once again as I, I was I was I was agreeing I agree with what with what Tufilis said about you don't like write one line and then rewrite it and rewrite it and rewrite it and then go on to the next line. So as you can see that in my first draft, the 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 main I mean the the, the main body of the poem is still is still is, is still the same because it starts from an idea. I write out I write out all the lines that are, that you know come forth, and then after that, then comes the tapering. Uh, even from small things like punctuation, as you can see, you know, in the second line, water test uh, along down slope roof, comma, uh, meant to sweep us, comma, but. When looking back at it, I, I thought that you know these these comments, this punctuation is a bit is a bit uh, disturbing. So, wanting to remove the punctuation, let it flow more more naturally. I you can see in the second draft that it, that, that part has, that that part doesn't have the punctuation any longer. And uh, sometimes like you you have an you have an aim like you have a that there's a there's the emo, there's an image in your head that you have that you aim to express on the paper, and you have all these parallels in your mind that you think that. Wouldn't it be wouldn't it be neat if it if it if it came out this way, but when you actually put it to word, it's a bit harder. So, for example, when I mean um, this idea is like you know watching the water flow down a roof, and by right, without this roof there, it should be it, we should all be flowing away with it. But and then I try to create that parallel in the first draft, you know, meant to sweep us, comma, yet held aloft by metal, comma, frameless glass. Um, and it didn't. It didn't. Really, I feel like it didn't really uh, sit with what I'm. With what I was trying to show. I was trying to emphasize this idea about the frame that is framed there, not met, like not is artificial. So in the second draft, I in the second draft, on, you can see that um, I, I I use that the, the equivalence of men to sweep us fragile frames, yet held aloft by metal, frameless glass. So in a way, there's a bit more parallel there, right? Um, Sometimes, sometimes it's even about, you know, the how, how I how to break up the lines, for me. So, you know, uh, we have here on the first draft reflections of on white walls like holograms of aqua dis diaspora of divergent drum lines, and then how about the asymmetry of thunder? But, you know, this was all like a, a real mouthful, and it, it, it didn't it didn't stand properly by itself. So. In the second draft, I, I elaborate more on this idea of the reflection of, of rain. Because I think what I was trying to say is that uh, I was trying to give the idea of that these, these images are not, are not really how they should be, but they are reflections. In the sense that they are weak, like holograms. They, they are, they are, but in the first draft, it, it was not said well at all. Like, I felt it was not said well at all. I didn't even understand what I was saying myself. So. I mean that, that that that's how you feel. So, in the second draft, I tried to to stretch it out a bit more. The reflection of rain on white walls, like holograms of aqua diaspora, of divergent drum lines, of culture feeling the violent annexation of white paint. So, in that sense, it it gives more sense to the to the the metaphor of 
white walls and white paint. So at least in that sense that it's it's built upon. Um, and then you know how about the asymmetry of thunder? It's broken out into into the next stanza to give it more of its of its own development. Um, yeah, and I guess one sometimes I I feel like uh, I uh, sometimes I feel like one of the main things for me is that. In my in my first collection of poetry, I always wanted I always wanted to I always wanted to write poetry that that was very uh, straightforward and spoke to the reader, because I, I read poets that and I always liked the most the conversational pieces, the ones that maybe you know they have you know it talks it comes from I to you, those kind of things, and I guess so for example, trying to streetlights is quite a conversational tone where addressing the addressing like addressing another person in a conversation almost, but I think also. For now, when I'm writing uh, more poems now, I also want to not just have that, not just have those kind of poems that that try to give that straightforward personal feeling, but also stuff where I extract, I extract the narrator a bit more, and um, have a bit more let, let the you know the poem be a bit more abstract by its, on its own, and not have too much of myself uh, a presence. So in in, in in that sense, maybe the reader can can feel more. So. For example, in the first draft, it says, uh, in, the, in the second stanza of the first draft, like this, on and on my heart went searching in a bounded world, etc. But uh, I mean, it's just a small change, but in the second draft, I have, I, in the third stanza, I've written, like this, on and on, on and on, a heart can go searching in a bounded world. So even, as a, even though it's a small difference, I feel like it's significant. Because on and on my heart went searching, Feels like, feels too self-centered and, and you know, not not a powerful, not something you can connect with, as opposed to the second draft. Um, yeah, and uh, and uh, in the part where in the, how about the asymmetry of thunder? And uh, it's trying to talk about how, thunder seems to be something that is. That is a very a natural force of power, like a like like a free energy, but like it seems to be asymmetrical. In that sense, it's beautiful. But it's still it's it's actually belied by a, a perfect friction, right? And it's it's neatly one line down from, from the sky to, to earth. But I felt like that was not brought that was confusing in the first draft. So the idea of still belied, so that the irony didn't really come through. For me, so in, in the in the second draft, um, instead of saying belied, I express I try to express in a more clear way those lines, lies, belied. So I guess that there's even the, the there's a more textual emphasis even like with that with that repetition with that lines lied belied of the fact that these lines are not actually uh, they're not they're not actually they're actually very straight and not uh, free in that sense. Um, okay, so um, I guess what I what I um, in conclusion in conclusion I normally I would normally what what happen when I write normally in my process of writing poetry I actually I, I I have a journal which I take down but obviously I don't always like go around with my journal and like write like that all the time so I actually just like I make a lot of notes in like my in like my phone. And um, I I would think about the first I think about how the poem would begin, and I'll make maybe I'll make a note, and then I'll think I'll I'll, know, I'll probably think about how it ends, and then I'll make a note. So for example, the ending of this poem, far away from here, I hope that unknown wild dogs still run in the wild. That was a note by itself, and then when I sit and I sit down and I I tend to to piece together these these notes, right? Or or alternatively, I, I sit down and and like vomit out one poem at a go. And then normally, then it takes time to to see how I, how you want to how I would like to space the words, how I feel I can better craft those parallels that I think that the reader will understand how it's happening in my own mind. And uh, you know, it's as though like putting those putting those pieces together, so so as to create a picture that that speaks for what you originally had originally felt, as well as you know. Give something that um, the reader could could also reinterpret, but but also understand where it came from, like as from the writer.
Okay. Okay. Right. Um, could, could I ask though, with, with the boundaries, it, so this is finished? Is this the finished product? The I, uh, I, I'm not, I, I don't know actually, I'm still writing. It's, so it's, it's, it's still the latest, still the latest the process, so that's quite exciting to see that it's, it's still moving then. Yeah. It could change. And I can't remember who was it who said that a poem is never finished, merely abandoned. It, it was somebody, wasn't it? Paul yeah. Paul Valeri or something, yeah, somebody, yeah. somebody like that. So an uh, interesting thought to, to think, when do you know a poem is actually uh, finished? But there we go. Um, okay, so maybe we can take some questions now. Thank you, Renchun. Uh, but maybe if, if Theo, would you be able to wheel your chair up the front and perhaps we could take some questions if possible. Yeah.